Hello, this is Max Rack. I just want to talk about this um, uh, 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 particular um, thing. I'm doing something on sites at the moment, and one of the ones that I've got is an existing site uh, for some people who uh, have got a cross-lease site. So um, the actual site itself is a very large site. It's not showing all the rest of it, but there's a whole load of property lines and lots of other um, fields through here. Now, one of the ways to actually create 3D PDS, which I'm an absolute fan of, because one, you can actually go and navigate your way around. You can zoom in on certain items. You can do a certain amount of interrogation on certain things. Um, you know, you can actually just do a slice through here. So it actually just shows just the rooms and you've moved all the other bits away. The other power with this as well that I actually, uh, absolutely love um, is something which I've done which is uh, export the CSV as a whole tree so it's taking the data set from inside Revit that's come across and it's exporting that now we're just going to call that ABC and we're going to save that and if we go into this macro sheet that I've actually made I'm just going to import that information through there and uh, I'm just going to go to the specific directory where they're all held and get that file there and so from that 3d pdf i've got about 10,754 rows of information uh not particularly well manageable so in this particular point in time i can filter it by doors this macro is actually just set up for doors so if i actually just go through i can then organize that information so it's just now going to create a specific sheet that just has the door information on it. So that's the information that is in the Revit model. It's come across into the 3D PDFs, and now I've got that information. Now, if I don't want some of these things, like the cell height or the dimensions or whatever through there, I can just delete that. Now, some of them aren't particularly well ordered, although all of those ones seem to be. And then I'm actually, we don't necessarily want the GUIDs, but I might have some ID information on it or some other things about those doors that um, uh, might be useful. Again, on this particular one through here, here on the macro I may want to do a, a, a custom select and say uh, I wanted to do something like oh, now what's actually on off filter say I wanted to do on filter on filter no. okay then yeah so let's just say um, I wanted trees so RPC trees I might be modeling uh, so it's just filtered out the trees through there and I can go and put that onto a separate sheet. Um, and it's going through that little exercise there and taking those trees. So if I was doing a bit of farm management and I've got certain trees that I wanted to look at and uh, manage so uh, I, I could do that. Not necessarily you do. I've got water tanks and things like that. I've got piping going to water tanks. But what it does is filters all that information out so that you can make it manageable and you've got some indication of what it is you know now you might have some markers on some trees or all sorts of things i don't know you know this is just one thing uh, these macro sheet can be modified to actually filter for trees instead of all of this this is real an internal thing so anyway this is why i quite like this now one of the things that struck me in this workflow was that i wanted to export but i only wanted to export this part of the site and later on i actually want to start building all the fences and everything regarding this part of the site now if i just go from straight away from here and go export file it will export the whole 3d model so even if i do a section box through here and i hide half that information and I only want to show this information through here, it will still export the whole file. And so therefore, when I come into my 3D PDF, I won't just have the bit that I want, I'll actually have the whole 3D model of the whole site. And that's a bit distracting. Suddenly you're dealing with a large bit of area. So what I actually had to do in this particular occasion is that I had to save this model again as another one, then chop off half of it and remodel it so that only that information was in there now if i then found there was a mistake or i wanted to move a fence or something like that i'd actually have to go and start managing two models at the same time one for the 3d pdfs and one for the other or else i'd update one model and then i'd actually have to go through and re-modify it so only this part was shown so that's a bit of a frustration now again the pd 3df um, uh, exporter from uh, Re revit is about um, this is a simlab one is about two hundred dollars but you can actually get the simlab composer 
um, for about the same price. Now, one thing that you can do with this is that you can link it. So when you actually come into the 3D PDF, you can only export exactly what's in that scope box. Now, it's not ideal because it will still only export and, and uh, scope boxes are, is this section boxes, sorry, a square. Uh, or sorry, rectangular. So I've still got an extra bit of the site down here that I don't want. Possibly I could reorientate it or do something to actually adjust it so that I could sort of make it a little bit more accurate to what I want and that way I could link with this and come through. And inside the full-blown um, uh, uh, SimLab Composer, I've only got the light version here, I can then export to 3D PDF. Now what this does here um, is that it will only export everything that's been imported. So all the rest of the data that might have been on the rest of this site doesn't come across. It's not in here. So this only exports, but it's still got the same data that was in Revit in the first place. So if you imagine this is a seven-story tall building and you want the information of level five and you want to give that to one client, you don't actually have to save the model and then delete all of the other floors apart from five, then make a 3D PDF. You can actually just use your scope box, transfer it across to here, and do that for the same price as what you do with the other one. Now, the other thing that's really powerful in this as well is that you get your visualizations and you can do some other things as well. So if you explore the SimLab Composer, you'll find that it's a very good tool and it also does the 3D PDF stuff as well. So um, that was just something that I've been with and using before and I've been quite pleased with what it's done um, as far as simplifying things. Unfortunately when I was actually playing with Revit this first time around I actually ended up having to butcher this model just so that I could actually get the, the, the PDF that I wanted out in this occasion and I thought well actually if I'd have had the um, uh, composer I would have ended up with a much more elegant solution. So I hope that's been of interest to you um uh if you're if you enjoyed the video can you please give it a thumbs up thank you very much for watching